welcome to our Sustainable House Day presentation on Harmony House. This video is a short introduction to our project, so I'll concentrate on seven solutions we've found to some common obstacles people come across. Some of these solutions are relatively new, things I hadn't heard of before, so I hope they'll be of particular help and interest. I'll put relevant details up on screen as we go, as that's something I've found really helpful on past Sustainable House Days, when homeowners handed out details on all the useful things they've done. So first up, design, with a common problem here being how to get a really energy efficient and effective passive solar house on a modest budget. I spent a long time looking into all sorts of different options without managing to find that combination of performance we were after and affordability that we needed. But that all changed when I discovered the design for place house plans soon after they first appeared on the Your Home website. Now that website itself deserves a huge mention if you haven't already come across it, as the passive solar and building information on it is just fantastic. Really high quality information tailored specifically to the Australian context. And the design for place house plans when I discovered them really blew me away. All the necessary passive solar design elements have been professionally packaged together. And because it was an outwardly simple design, using standard building materials and methods, together with the design fees which are saved because the plans are freely downloadable, it all came together to mean that we'd finally found our perfect combination of passive solar performance at an affordable build cost. We went full steam ahead from that point and became the first to build the design for place design, now known as their Banksia design, and it performs fantastically. We have really stable internal temperatures all year round and it's a great design to live in. So check out the Your Home site. It's a fantastic resource for renovations and retrofits as well as full builds. They've got some new design options out now and a whole lot of information on sustainable living topics. Another solution to a common problem has to do with flooring. Almost always with passive solar designs, the floor is exposed polished concrete so that the concrete slab functions as internal thermal mass. That's great for performance, but many people don't like the look or feel of exposed concrete to live on, my wife and I included. We'd reluctantly resigned ourselves to the necessity of it for the thermal performance, but then I stumbled across heat wood flooring from Eco Timber Group. This is a relatively new product developed for the in-slab hydronics market, but which works perfectly in a passive solar scenario as well, because in both situations you want heat exchange from the room to the slab and vice versa. So these floorboards are basically 14 mils of composite stone with a thin layer of wood on top, all specifically designed for heat transfer. I was over the moon when I discovered them because it meant we could have our cake and eat it too. We're thermally connected to our slab for thermal performance, but with the full look and feel of living on timber flooring rather than exposed concrete. The third thing we want to share was another lucky find after some research. We wanted to have a really nice wood cladding look, but didn't want the ongoing cost and maintenance issues that wood comes with. What we found was territory cladding from Cementel, which are basically fibre cement panels with a whole range of really nice wood look and stone look finishes. They look great and come with two huge bonuses. Firstly, there's no ongoing maintenance needed in terms of oiling or painting, and secondly, they come with what the company calls a Nikigard self-cleaning coating, where silica particles in the finish absorb water molecules from the air to form a protective film on the surface. That means dirt doesn't attach directly to the panel, but washes away when it rains. So this cladding is a real winner and I think will look as good as new for decades to come. One of the main ways to reduce your environmental footprint is to use less energy. Better performing houses do that of course, and generating your own electricity takes things a step further. When I was researching solar PV systems, especially off-grid ones, it became really clear to me that the single most important thing was to get someone really experienced to size and design it. Out of all the companies I contacted, the one that really stood out from the rest was Off-Grid Energy Australia. They install all across Australia and are real specialists in both off-grid and hybrid systems. So I confidently left the system design in their hands, answering all their questions about our lifestyle and past energy use, etc. And the result has been fantastic. Our battery levels almost never dip below 80% even in winter, which shows the system has great design redundancy. We have to show some user common sense, of course, which generally just means doing our discretionary loads, things like the dishwasher and washing machine, 
during the day using available sunlight rather than dipping into the battery bank overnight. But that actually becomes part of the fun, being aware of the weather conditions outside and making usage choices based on that. In fact, one of the best tips I can give to help that process along is to have your system data available in a really convenient and accessible position. We have a small tablet screen flush mounted into a kitchen wall, so at a glance we can see exactly how much energy our appliances are currently using, how much of that is coming directly from the panels, and how much might be coming from the battery bank. After a few months of watching that panel closely and relating it to the clouds and sunlight I was seeing outside, I soon became really adept at knowing what loads to do when to get the most out of the system. And something just as important as energy, good clean healthy drinking water. With the main decision here being what material we should collect rainwater in, especially if we are going to be using it for drinking. Researching this showed me that the standout option by far is stainless steel. It's an extremely non-reactive material that lasts for absolutely ages, so is ideal for long-term water storage without any chemicals gradually leaching into your water, as can happen with degrading plastics over time. And because it is such a long-lived material, when you work out the cost over the lifetime of the product, a stainless steel water tank is more cost-effective than a plastic one. We found a great supplier with a company called Stainless Steel Tanks. They did a really great job, not only with custom-sized tanks, but also with first flush diverters and an autovac system to go with them. The first flush diverters discard the initial wash of water from the roof and the autovac system uses a siphoning action to suck out any bottom sediment during an overflow event. We've also added various filters to the water line coming into the house, including a UV filter, so the resultant water quality is really excellent. But it was that first decision, going with stainless steel, that forms the core of our healthy system and gives us long-term peace of mind. Our second last tip involves internal thermal mass, which is a key component of passive solar design. So in addition to the slab, other internal mass components are often called for, such as the internal masonry walls in the design for place design. We stuck with the standard choice of brick for the two end bedroom walls, but opted for rammed earth for the main living room walls, the reverse sides of which make up the other two bedroom walls. We're so glad we made that decision for two reasons. Firstly, rammed earth has better thermal density and thermal release properties compared to brick, so our house performs better for them. And secondly, the aesthetics are just fantastic. It increases our overall enjoyment of the house every day. Ours were done by Earth Structures Peninsula and we really enjoyed seeing them rise up from the slab early in the build. We're really glad we chose rammed earth, loving the look of them, as well as benefiting from their thermal performance. And number seven, last but certainly not least, is the problem of having nice large lawn areas, but not the time to keep on top of all the mowing. The 450X auto mower from Husqvarna has been an amazing solution in this regard. You set up boundary wires around your lawn and a guide wire down the middle, then after setting a few parameters, off it goes. It mows for a few hours each day, depending on the size of the area, constantly trimming the grass to a set level so that it always looks perfect. There's no cut grass to worry about, as the millimetre or so of trimmings each day goes unnoticed. And the best bit is how eco-friendly it all is. There's not a single drop of fossil fuel used, and it takes our solar PV system only two minutes on an average day to generate enough energy to power the unit for over 10 hours of mowing. The kids and I have named him Humphrey and talk about him almost like a family pet. He's a big talking point with visitors too, being quite the novelty. As a time-saving and energy-efficient solution, the 450X is awesome, one of the best additions to the project we've made. So that's out of time, but hopefully some of those things are new and helpful. There's heaps more I could talk about, like our worm farm septic system, where a colony of live worms process all of our black and grey water, or our far-infrared heating panels. Although we don't have to use them often, they're a great backup source of radiant heat that work really well in a passive solar scenario. This year we've also managed to affordably add an electric vehicle to the project, and have found ways to manage the charging regime successfully on our off-grid energy system. So feel free to go to our website for more detail on our whole project. Thanks to Renew and their sponsors for organising such a great event each year. And I'll leave you with a screenshot of those on-screen details we've put up so you can find them all here easily. A bit like those physical handouts from homeowners that I've found so helpful in past years. Good luck in all your plans and projects. I hope they turn out really well. <laughs>